Hi everyone, Raphael Harry here, and you're listening to White Label American, a podcast where we hear stories from an immigrant or two, sometimes more. Thank you for listening and enjoy the show. Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of White Label American. We're having such a great conversation last week with Desi, our guest, that we decided to make it a two-part conversation, and we released part one only last week. So uh, this is part two, and if you did not catch part one, I recommend that you listen to part one from last week and then come back and catch part two. That's about to begin right now. But let's move on to something a lot more fun. All right. Um, so you've from Texas, Hawaii, you know, moved around the country a little bit, mm. and then Japan. One thing that everywhere you've been to has is music. And yeah. where you were born and raised has a huge contribution to the hip hop culture in the United States. It's something that I just came to the realization of lately, funny enough, because you know, part of the ignorance that I had was also looking in part of the looking down on, on the South was its contribution to hip hop. You know, and now that I live in New York, I've always been on the New York, you know, West Coast side of hip hop in general, except for um, Atlanta, you know, the crunk. Um, mm, right, right. But without realizing that even the Houston side of things played a big part in the hip hop uh, revolution. So I thank Netflix for putting me on that too, to realize that your part of Texas also played a big part. Mm. So um, when it comes to music, what defines you and um, how has the places you've lived in contributed to your music tastes? Oh man, uh, like I guess back then when I was younger, it was like I was always, I guess not saying like following a crowd, but I guess I was in a way because like, just catching up with music, like who's listening to this, who's listening to that, like what songs are like popping, what's going really, you know, really good. Um, but then I guess like when I start going to like the clubs and start hearing a lot of music, like, oh yeah, that's from, that's a Texas artist. Oh man, like it started kind of like coming in. I was like, dang, I, I feel good. Cause I'm like, oh, from Texas, I hear, you know, my hometown type, you know, music. And I think, what was that? Especially like here too in Japan too, like I guess, it, I think hip hop uh, plays a really big part out here in Japan too, because it's a lot of uh, kids, a lot of kids, um, a lot of adults too. Uh, but mostly the kids, they always trying to uh, learn like hip hop stuff, uh, learn music like slang, all that stuff. Like some some of the kids like I used to teach to, that was all about like, oh, you know, oh, 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 Mr. Cedric, you know about this, you know. They, you know, these people got married. I'm like, oh, what? Dang. Like, I didn't know that yet. I was like, you know, I mean, I was still listening to people's music, but I wasn't researching stuff like that. But it was like, that's how much they, you know, hip hop, like, influence, you know, a lot of kids out here, too, uh, in Japan. And I didn't realize it was so big, but it's really big to me out here in Japan and stuff. I, I didn't really think it was that big, but I was like, yeah, it's, I think it plays a really big part out here, too, in Japan like hip hop like it, yeah. it's crazy it's crazy what about in hawaii hawaii oh man i think it's kind of like <laughs> i think it's 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 there but i think it's more of kind of like um how can i say it's not a hundred percent not to say a hundred percent it's it's there but it's more i feel like it's a local hmm. kind of more of a local type stuff so there's like a local artists is and stuff like there in, in Hawaii, who's um, who they, I feel like not cater to, but it's kind of like they want to put them put them out there, you know, because you know they're native to the land. So just kind of put them out there in the spotlight so they can get recognition, you know, for you know contributing to you know their part. Like okay, this is Hawaii hip hop. You know, yeah. we want the world to you know out, uh, we want the world to know about Hawaii. You know, like we got hip hop too. You know, so so stuff like that. You know. So but, would you say Hawaii hip hop is where where it's at? Is like um, where the Houston area hip hop was at before it blew up. Um, I think well, Hawaii hip hop is not like I don't think it's super big. 
I yeah. think it's still feel like I think it's more still kind of like uh, underground a little bit, but like 90s. Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. So you know, there's not. I think there's not a big mainstream of, of hip hop artists in Hawaii, but there's like I think one or two that I, that I know off the top of my head. Um, he's pretty good though. I remember hearing one of his um, his songs before, and I think he did. He did. He opened up for some artists. Uh, one of the famous artists that came out there too for Hawaii. But I'm trying oh. to remember, it's been a while. <laughs> it's been a while. Oh, you can just tell me the name later on. If, if you yeah, don't. yeah. And um, what was that? So just kind of like compare like hip hop scene though with that. It's there too, like I guess with like dancing, like a lot. But they was doing a lot of the more stuff like that. What was that stuff? The crump? Crumping? You know that? The crump? Crump. Like, yeah, yeah, doing all the little dances. I, I, I can't remember all of it, but it was like crump. It was doing yeah. that kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, it was just like pretty big. I saw a couple pictures from uh, one of my friends who lived in Hawaii. They was doing that um, in high school, and I said, "Oh, word!" Like, oh dang, I didn't know it was like kind of big here too. So, but I guess like it's certain areas, I guess, in Hawaii that got a bigger scene for you know like hip hop and stuff like that. So it's not super big, but I think it's more kind of like a little bit underground, a little bit. So. Okay, so who who are you like, like your favorite artists? Oh man! <laughs> or, or, um, in Japan, whichever. Oh, let me think. Oh my God! Like I've been, <laughs> I know a lot of people are probably gonna be like, "Oh man, he's a softy." <laughs> but I, I, I listen to hip hop. I listen to hip hop, but I'm more. I guess I feel more mellow and more chill. Like I just start listening to like more of uh, like R and B. Okay. R&B. I'm just like a mellow person now. <laughs> Hey, nothing wrong with that, man. Music is music. <laughs> you enjoy what you enjoy. Right, 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 right. So I know people be like, yo, what's wrong with this, man? You know, like, nah. Yeah, it's, just, hey, it's my taste, man. It's my taste. We all <laughs> got our taste. <laughs> but I listen to, uh, who I listen to? Um, some artists like uh, Avant, Neo, uh, was that Usher? Tyrese, uh, who was that? Genuine, like I guess, like some old artists. Yeah. Uh, who else? Yeah, old school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just, I feel like I'm more still old school. Like all the new stuff coming out, I'm like, like I can listen to some of it, but some stuff, like I don't know. But I think who else? Who else is pretty cool? I liked, I liked it. Uh, Chris Brown, yeah, Chris Brown. Uh, who's that? Pimp C. And um, Bun B from um, Port Arthur. Uh, I'm probably sorry to listen to a lot of Texas names, probably a minute. <laughs> Slim Doug, I like him. You know, Zero. Uh, who's that? Who's that? Who's that? Like TI. You ain't got none from uh, Japan? Uh, Japan. Oh my God. Uh, I haven't really, uh, I haven't really got it because, like, I don't know, like, I don't. I don't understand the, I don't have the language down to, <laughs> I can understand what they're saying when they're rapping. So it's kind of hard for me to um, find an artist though, like in Japan, that's a, like a hip hop artist. But there was one artist, um, I think they came recently, a couple of days, not a couple of days, uh, last month. Uh, his name was, I think, Cole or something like that. It was Cole. He does a lot of hip hop. Uh, he's like, he's a really big uh, artist. He's, uh, he's one of my, um, uh, on Instagram, okay. he did a show at um, at a club out here too. So he's a really big artist. I didn't really know. I said, "Oh, word!" Like, okay. So I went to check this stuff. I was like, "Oh, dang!" Like, "Oh, okay." I see why now. You know, I mean, I can't understand everything, but just yeah. like little bits of here and there. So I was like, "Okay." So I didn't really know he was that big because I I didn't really have the Japanese you know, hip hop artists, you know, list yet. So I had to update that <laughs> when I started listening to people's stuff. So he'll, he'd be number one right now because I'll actually listen to some of his stuff. So he, he's number one right now. So. All right. And when it comes to food, hmm. being that you're from an area in the United States that has soul food. Oh man. <laughs> and you live in Hawaii that has mm. its own type of cuisine that's mm. big on seafood and at the same time big in 
It's on. I, I don't know. Is it called soul food over there too? Because Hawaii uh, itself, it's you know when, when it comes to pork, it's it's unique what they do with pork over there. Mm-hmm. Japan has its own cuisine that's on its own universe on it entirely. So right, right. you're exposed to like three different unique types of cuisine. So. Are they all your favorites, or do you have a specific oh, favorite? Man. man, I think, you know what, to be honest, man, I think if I was only staying in Texas and I only ate Texas food, I think I would have just been Texas, that's it. But since I've been around, man, it's, it's, I say all the places I've been, like, they had really good food. Like, I couldn't really say there's a place that, that didn't really have like you know some food that's like ah uh, this this ain't worth eating don't even eat that like it's not worth it but yeah. like texas i mean what is that um because we do a lot of like uh barbecue a lot, a lot yeah. of barbecue crawfish balls and all that kind of stuff so i mean like that stuff like it's normal so i'm like yo i'm i've been waiting to do that for a while or have some of that <laughs> Uh, in Hawaii, though, Hawaii, like a lot of pork. Like, I don't really eat that much, like, pork. Like, I don't really eat that much pork. But um, some stuff, what was that they had? Um, dang, because, like, it's, it's, like, everything. Some stuff is, like, mixed. I, didn't, I never really had, like, a real, like, Hawaiian, like, dish. Like, everything, like, this is Hawaiian style. Like, everything's come from different parts of, you know, their backgrounds, like, because, you know, Hawaiian, Japanese, Filipino, so some yep. people, like, mix with three or four different, you know, uh, gener- uh, genes, so I'm like, oh, dang, so, you know, they got a little bit different everything, so um, I can say that the dishes are, like, really not complicated, but it's good, like, they have everything com- kind of complements each uh, each other, in a way. Um, what is that? I'm trying to think, what was that, the stuff they had? Um... What was that? Um, dang, I'm trying to remember what. The, I can't remember the names. I gotta look at the. <laughs> I gotta look up some of the stuff. But um, I remember, like, I, I can remember some snack stuff. It's just like, dang, like I would eat this like on the go. Uh, what's that? Uh, that musubi, musubi. Mm-hmm. So musubi is a. Um, they got spam on top, rice, and in the middle. Underneath the rice, they got like um, what they put in there. I forgot what they put in there. To be honest, they put something like some seaweed or some uh, some nori or something. I forgot they put in there, and then they wrap it around with the little seaweed, and yeah. then boom, there you go. You got a little musubi. You eat that, and like you good. Like it's, I normally eat that sometimes, like for breakfast or something. Grab it from like Seven Eleven. And wow. just like go and like oh I'm like I'm good like I don't need no full plate nothing like that like I'm good to go and stuff and um oh what was that too like even the McDonald's in Hawaii they had like their own like Hawaii breakfast I was like what the I like I ain't never seen that in my life so I was like why are you breakfast what is this <laughs> I don't I don't usually eat McDonald's but yeah. probably if I if I were in Hawaii I would I'll be eating definitely. McDonald's <laughs> definitely get, get the local get the local breakfast like that it, it tripped me out because I was like oh because I'm thinking all oh, you know uh, McDonald's have the same stuff you know so yeah. it's like oh it's everywhere but I guess like in each region of the world they gotta cater to you know the local population yeah so you know? You know, so I was like, oh, okay, so that makes sense, so, you know. Um, but I was just like, yeah, they got, like, um, Portuguese sausage, uh, I guess, like, a, like a uh, what's that, some eggs, some hash browns, and they got, like, uh, what's this stuff, uh, taro, taro. It's like a, um, like a root. Yeah. I guess it's kind of like sweet potato, kind of, I would say, like sweet potato. Yeah, it's like a potato fry. Yeah. So I was just like, like that. I was like, oh, what's this taro stuff? Like, I don't know what this taro stuff is. <laughs> but I ate it. I was like, dang. I was like, oh, it's kind of like, remember, like sweet potatoes. But it's like, hey, it's pretty good. So, you know, I was like, dang, okay, I'm learning stuff little by little now, you know. So, yeah. And uh, Japan, I think, what was that? What was that thing they call soul food here? Like, what kind of soul food they had? Um, they have a soul food in Japan, too. Yes. Uh, I'm trying to remember what was the name. Like, some dish was like, someone was telling me like, that's like the soul food of Japan. Like, it was some dish. Oh, man. 
Dang, I'm trying to remember this stuff. <laughs> All right. Is, but is it as healthy as the yeah. as most Japanese meals tend to be? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I think like the most traditional like Japanese dish would be it was kind of like uh, they got some type of fish. They got some miso soup. They got some um, what was that? They had soup, miso soup, some fish. Um, what was that? I think like I don't know. I forgot how you, how they make these little eggs though. It's like it looks. Dang, it's like it's like it looks like a um, they make it to like a shape actually. So it's like huh. gotta, it's kind of like filled in, and it's just like it's so fluffy though. It's like probably say like this wide, but it's like really fluffy. I was like, dang, like how they make eggs like this, man? Like I need to learn how to make that. <laughs> Cause it'd be so good. Though. I ain't gonna lie, man. It'd be so good. And they got some other stuff too, though. But like the traditional dishes, like it's pretty, it's pretty healthy though. Like I, I can say that in Japan, like there's a lot of healthy like recommendation type stuff, type of food that they eat out here. So like, if you're trying to get like, uh, like you're just trying to just eat, just, they got a lot of options like that. Just, you don't have to be like eat till you get full and all that kind of stuff. Just pretty much they got, this is the, the I guess like maybe the recommended portion yes. size for you. So just like that. So yeah. Uh, that's good. That's good too. And it's a lot of walking too, so it's like oh, okay, so you eat, you're walking around a lot, so it's like yeah, so you can't really get too big unless you don't care. Then it's like all right, you're gonna get big. <laughs> oh, okay. So yeah, definitely. Oh, that's that's good to know. That's good to know. I don't know. I have a feeling that if I had been stationed in Japan, I probably would have been. Uh, I probably would have stayed there, like settled down there. If, yeah, man, I think I've probably been the same. Been the same, same kind of like, man. So you moved to Japan after Hawaii, and then you decided to become a full. Uh, you go. You decided to go full time into the entrepreneur business. Mm. You embraced your entrepreneur uh, side, uh, the entrepreneur side of you. So how, how did that come along? Um, I think what was that? Um, when I was teaching for a while too, uh, with that, I was just like trying to have like a second income to come in, um, you know, just kind of like do teaching to fund, you know, the business until you know I can get things situated. And it was just kind of like I was thinking of something like I mean, I had it for a while, but uh, I think when I was in school too, when I was learning Japanese, like I had the idea, but I didn't have it all the way thought out yet. I was like, ah, it's like, it's good. But then it was like, you know, what can I do to like, you know, make some, make this happen. And then it just kind of set on the back burner for a while for like maybe what, three years or so. And I finally got back into it. I was like, all right, let's get this started. Cause you waited too long, you know, to do it. So let's get it started now. So it's out the way. And I was just like, yo, what can I do to, you know, make things, you know, uh, better. Or how can I improve like someone's life, you know, with this idea that I have, you know? Mm-hmm. And it was just something that uh, one of my actually uh, who's this? Uh, one of my mentors I met uh, doing a um, a TV show like uh, Extra. Um, he helped me out with a lot of stuff. So like helped me revamp everything from before to the new things now. So uh, big shout out to uh, Roger Clark. He's uh, my mentor. <laughs> he helped me out <laughs> with my brand and everything like that. He's a real cool brother that I met and stuff. So he's been uh, guiding me and helping me get uh, my brand situated. Do you meet him in Japan? Yeah, yeah. I met him uh, doing a little extra job, uh, extra gig, like doing it for a TV show or a movie. I met him, yeah. So we had connected and he was telling me about a lot of stuff that he was doing in Japan as well and showed me a lot of stuff. So, oh, wow. And he a lot of lot of stuff. I was like, dang, okay. So he got he earned my trust and he'd been uh helping me uh when I had issues and problems with some things. So cool. So do, do you still um do stuff in the in the acting side of things? Uh yeah. Um this the last one I was <laughs> what did I do? I was a, a drug dealer. <laughs> <laughs> the last job, 
<laughs> so that was kind of funny. My last job before the coronavirus started going crazy, and yeah, but uh, most of the jobs I did some, um, what was that? Some uh, commercials I did one recent. Another one I did was for um, not the Olympics, but for the Masters World Games. So it's just like they have a event coming out here. I think next year. Okay. Um, so that's going to be taking place. And I did, um, a job for that. I was a rugby player ah. for that. And, um, another one, I played a, a Brazilian Santa. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now nah, I'll, I'll have to see that one. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I was like, at first I was thinking, I was like, I can't be no Brazilian. I'm like, I don't look Brazilian. But then I started looking at some pictures like, oh, yeah, you can mm, pass one. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I could probably pass one. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, good call, good call. So yeah, that um what was that? Um some like uh mystery detective drama that I was in. Uh just just extra, just kinda like just playing around with other people. And yeah, that's pretty much it for that. And then I did most stuff. The first times that the first ones that I did was uh, in Hawaii. I oh. did um, Hawaii Five O. I was doing some extra work for that show. Oh really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even though it was like one or two seconds, you can see me. <laughs> hey, yeah, you, you, you started something at least. <laughs> right, right, right. You know, so did that and another show. I think it's like the last ship. I think it was the last ship. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a show. Yeah, did that, and I did a uh, movie one. Uh, I didn't think I was gonna get the job. I was kind of scared um, because they called me back in to do audition. And I was like, "Oh, what I'm doing?" Like, cause I didn't have no lines or anything. They were just like, "All right, we want you to read this line." I'm like, "Oh, I gotta remember this now." Like, what? I'm not ready. <laughs> I don't know what to do. So I kind of panicked, and then I was like, "Oh, you gotta uh, do you have like an accent or something?" I was like, "Uh." Accents. I'm like, I'm not trained to do accents. <laughs> so I just gave my best accent that I could give them for that time. And um, I guess like the next day or the week later, they called me like, oh, we want you to do this job. I'm like, oh, word. Like, oh, man. Wow. And um, it was funny too. Like, after the, uh, the, I think it was like, only did, it was supposed to be like a seven hour um, job. But it turned out actually for like three hours and we got paid like the full price for seven hours. I was like, what? Oh, cool. And it was I thought it was going to be in part of the movie at first, but it was just just just, uh, you know, get people hyped up for the uh, movie. And it was for um, Planet of the Rise of the Planet of the Apes. That was for a promo for that. And I was like, oh, man. But I think I think everybody saw that. But um, I'm yeah, trying to make sure people tell me. <laughs> So for like on YouTube, uh, what was that? It was called um, Ape with AK-47. He's just, uh, there's a lot of like African um, soldiers sitting around chilling. And then all of a sudden the little chimpanzee, he comes out with the AK. I don't know. I guess like they was playing around with him. And so oh, look at the monkey, look at the monkey. Yeah. And, yeah. And they gave it to him and then he starts shooting. It. Da, 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 da. I was the first guy to get out of there. <laughs> oh, I have to go to watch that now. Yeah, yeah I remember right. that scene. But we know what. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It blew up. And I was like, man. I was like, oh my God. I was like, man. I didn't think that would blow up like that. But I was like, it, you know, it's for a movie and everything. So it's like, it got to blow up. So I was like, man. So I think doing that one, it really, uh, it really like got me on to do the like, try to do more acting jobs and stuff like that because it's like man doing that and it could blow up like man let me find another job like this man uh, wow. uh, i remember that scene I, yeah wow uh, yeah I, I have to go to watch this <laughs> i've been telling people, people like, oh they ain't you i'm like they, say, they can't tell you. i'm like look at the face take some still shots and look, like I can show you, it's me. Okay, <laughs> it wow. ain't that hard. <laughs> that is, that is beautiful. Wow, uh, <laughs> that was funny, man. So you went from all that into vet clothing, and mm -hmm. so you being a, a veteran, and 
um, that that inspired you to choose the name Vet Clothing? Um, in the beginning, it was like that in the beginning. But then, um, what was that? I was talking with my mentor, too. And I was just trying to think of like, I, I like I like the word vet. It's like, I like it. Uh, it was just something that I saw like, it's it felt like a, a, a good symbol, a good word to use. Mm-hmm. But then it's like, I wanted to bring out the, um, like a definition behind it too as well. Like some um, important meaning behind like vet, you know? So like vet, like vet, like, you know, you double checking things, you know, you're making sure things are, you know, accurate or you know up to the standards yeah. and stuff like that so it's like oh man that sounds kind of powerful a little bit hold on like i like that now okay <laughs> so and that was kind of like my mentor was kind of helping me get that that gauge because like i wanted to at first i kind of wanted to cater to veterans but then it's like i don't want to kind of make it just a broad audience i kind of wanted for like everybody to kind of like have the same like impact as well too so that's why i kind of converted it over so all right Let's get more of this this name, this this feeling. This like I want people to feel empowered. I want people to feel like, hey, you know, like you're a boss. You know, hey, you're this, you're that. You know, don't worry about nothing else. You can achieve stuff like that. So this, I think that kind of brought up a lot of things. Like, yo, yeah, let's get some powerful stuff. You know, behind this, you know, name and stuff. So and and that's how I kind of start changing over. And that's how my mentor help my mentor start helping me uh, get that type of um, change I needed to make this um make this brand go into a different uh different route a better route actually a better route so i can make sure everyone you know when they have it like yo this bed clothing like yo i'm bad like oh like i'm i'm this i'm that I'm like oh man like, oh i like that <laughs> so you know they feel that type of way every time when they you know they wear uh one of these items yeah i can tell the, the quality is Woo, it's nice. It's <laughs> Appreciate nice. it, brother. <laughs> guys, you guys, you guys did your homework. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> My wife loves it, and yeah, the whole the whole family, every, everybody loves it, man. And I, I appreciate it, it, in it every time. So I have no arguments, and I, I I recommend the audience checks it out, and y'all will feel good in it, and get it as gifts for somebody too. So right. Yeah, so has uh, COVID-19 affected your business? Oh, man. My customer just got the uh, I- item today. I mean, yeah, today. <laughs> it's been what? Uh, what was that? Ordered it last month, I think on the 25th of uh, March. So it's been like a month, pretty wow. much. So I was like, man, what? So, but I realized um, the order was from the U.S. Uh, because they got different fulfillment centers too. So that uh, they went to the one to the U.S. Now I was trying to get them to change it to the one to Europe, so it could be a little bit quicker. But I guess um, the timing when I contacted them, they couldn't change it over to the Europe side. So I was like, oh man, and I didn't know it was going to be that much of a wait. So. I was like, oh, my God. So I'm constantly contacting uh, my customer. Hey, sorry about this. Sorry for the delay. I'm, I'm, I'm on it. I'm checking the site. I'm calling them I'm like, hey, what's going on? And they're telling me, oh, yeah, COVID-19, you know, spec delays coming to happen. And I was like, oh, well, when I ch- when I did do the order, they was like, well, you, you may have a, a wait of like one month to your order. I was like, what? Like, I'm like, no, I can't, I can't have that because now I'm be, I'm be really out of business having orders like one month. Like, no, that's, that's crazy. So I was just like, all right. So I had to change the fulfillment center to the Europe, uh, the Europe one, because they said like that one's starting to get a little bit better. So the wait time is not that long. So if it is, like, you may wait like maybe mm, like a day or two extra. And I was like, oh, okay, that's not too bad then. So yeah, so just. For them, it's like maybe like a week ish for them. But for the US side, I guess anytime from maybe two weeks to maybe a month is the time frame. So I'm like, oh man, so it's gonna be kind of rough. So does the government in Japan offer any support to businesses like yours? Oh uh, man, actually, you know what? Um, I haven't really 
reached out to the government of Japan yet? Because, I mean, I've been, like, bootstrapping. I've been doing it pretty much from my own funds, <laughs> everything. So, but I haven't really sought government help because, I don't know, I guess I feel like now, like, I guess when I was younger, too, like, dealing with loans and stuff, is like, I felt like I was so irresponsible. <laughs> yeah, I, I understand that. <laughs> I had maybe like what eighteen, nineteen years old. I had like three credit cards, a car loan, <laughs> yeah, but no driver's license. Like man, like I had so much. <laughs> <laughs> I had so much bad stuff, man. Like oh man, I just like now, just like I don't even want no more credit, no more credit, no more loans, none of that. So like. If I can't pay for it in cash, then I, I can't do it. Or if I can't pay, you know, in installments, then I don't want to do it because, like, uh, I got so scared with dealing with loans, man. Just I, I get nightmares sometimes. <laughs> I get nightmares like, oh, you want a loan? Nah, I want no loan, man. Nah, I don't want that stuff. Mm-mm. My mama told me to stay away from that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so that, that's how bad it's starting to get. But, uh, I mean... I think I remember looking on the website though too for Japan about uh, businesses. So I think I may reach out to them. I guess um, what is that? If I get an actual physical store, okay, I may reach out to them. But then I still want my. I have to maybe I want to do like a test run though for it. So I may have a. Um, actually, yeah, actually that's what I was thinking too about. I was going to do a. Um, a dry run, I was going to have a, just a um, pop-up store um, for like a day or two, a one or two day event, and uh, just see how it is, you know, just kind of like the store life, you know, and if the if the pop-up store uh, event goes good, then it was like, all right, cool, you know, maybe I may, you know, see if I can like lease uh, space for a while for like maybe like a, a couple months or something just to see how it is, like, I don't want to do it long term because, like, I don't know. Like, I don't want to be paying like a lot of money, you yeah, know, for yeah. like rent and all that stuff. So, those things. Just on um, Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, the online store is easier. I don't have to pay that much money for that. So it just kind of helps me, you know, maintain my business a little bit. Uh, well, be flexible too as well and stuff. So if I do my job and do that. And say, like, all right, so you know, I don't have to devote all my time at the store and then try to do my other jobs. I'm like, oh, I can't do both. I got to pick one. So, you know, that kind of thing. All right. So um, going forward, how do you think uh, the, the future will look like for businesses like yours after the coronavirus pandemic is over? Oh, man. I think, actually, you know what, to be honest, I think most of these businesses right now that's online, I think they're some of them are actually kind of booming now since, you know, everyone's at home. So it's like, Oh, you know, let me get all my stuff now <laughs> for online shopping, <laughs> you know, cause I can't go outside and do this and that. So, you know, a lot of businesses are probably making more money now during this time period. But, you know, after this, I think maybe some people may still be doing good. Some people may see a decline in their business. That's what I'm thinking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, by the time the pandemic is over, you know, there might be people of color, be they from the United States or you know any other place, who might want to make the same journey that you've made, you know, to Japan. Yeah. What what piece of advice would you give to them if they want to go the routes that you've taking and mm. I would say um I mean I would say like travel first here like I mean like just stay here like say for instance um I mean if the, the time and money you know is is okay for the person <laughs> try to be out here for like you know more than like a week because I think if you're out here for a week you just be like it's a vacation but then you're not really here here you just like, oh, okay, I got to go back. But if you're here longer than a week, I think you can kind of have a better understanding a little bit of how some things are and just kind of see how the day-to-day is for uh, most people as well, too. Or, I mean, even if you do stay for the week, I think your main focus is probably like trying to see how you 
would adjust to living in Japan, you know, as a, you know, a foreigner and just, I mean, especially like, uh, especially people with different backgrounds and everything. So a lot of things, you know, uh, come to play like that too. So, but I say, yeah, I got an open mind to, you know, being uh, open mind to different things. And I think, you know, uh, give it a test run, see how things go for the first week. And if you like it, you know, come back, um, see, explore other options, like from a teacher, uh, uh, teacher number one is probably the quickest way <laughs> you can probably get in. Or if you get married, that's a second, uh, second option. Um, or if there's some other type of uh, open jobs that they have, uh, then yeah, I say apply for it and just, just try, just test the waters, you know, see how things are, you know, if you don't like it, you can always leave, you know, but um, I think, yeah, I guess when I was living in Hawaii, I think my mind was just really open and it's just like, yo, I'm like a sponge, like I want to absorb more stuff, man. Hold on. Let me get this. Let me get this. <laughs> I want to keep like uh, learning about different things to help me, you know, me be able to tell people about different stuff about, um, I mean, tell different parts of the world to different people that never like actually, you know, left their comfort zone, mm-hmm. you know? So especially like some people I know from, uh, my hometown. So like Severance was like, oh yeah, you know, I'm living in Japan. They're like, oh, you, oh, you're in China, right? I'm like, China? I said, like, oh, now I'm in Japan. Like, oh, same thing. You know, people be ignorant like that. It's like, you know, it's two different places. Like, oh, no, nah, no, it's not. It's all the same. And, you know, th- those stereotypes, you know, always, you know, around people and stuff. So it's just kind of like, you know, don't be stupid. You know, let's learn something. You know, like, hey, this man from Japan. Okay. Everybody got cell phones. It's 2020. Oh, Japan, China. Oh, it is different. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, same way we got stereotypes here about the you know, Texas, same way. It's like vice versa, too. It's right, right. About all that places. So, yeah, it's funny how that works. You know? Yeah. You don't really think about it. And then, you're like, oh, shit, we got stereotypes about everybody. Yep. Like, yeah. Definitely. We'll, we'll hold it down. Yeah. I think- one thing too, uh, I think it's so funny too. I think, uh, but there, I think not. It's, I guess it's not a stereotype, but I think it's a true statement. There's a China, uh, China. Uh, I guess China store, not China store. Uh, Chinese community, like I guess, like everywhere, like a Chinatown. Yeah, Chinatown. Yeah, there's a Chinatown everywhere you go. There's a Chinatown everywhere you go. I kid Even you in not. Japan. Yes, oh, wow. kind of, uh, yeah, I was tripped. I was like, Whoa, I was like, that Man, is, hold up, what? New to yeah, me. man, I, I'm telling you, man, like, I think uh, everywhere in the world, towns yeah. were an American thing. Mm-mm, I think it's every to, to, in, in my opinion, I think it's a Chinatown everywhere you go around the world. I'll ask my buddy in South Africa now, yeah, man. <laughs> I mean, it's small, but I think, yo, I think it's like everywhere, I think it's everywhere. Wow, hmm, that is, yeah, that, that that's something that I've never, I've, I've never thought about. <laughs> yeah, same. Because I think it was well, I went to Australia on a, like a uh, on a trip, and I saw that. I said, like, "What?" I was like, "Oh man, how long? Time time." Like, what? How long? <laughs> So I'm like, I start thinking. I'm like, man, there's probably like a Chinatown in every part of the world, probably now. Hmm. So. It's crazy because that initially started as something racist in America, mm-hmm. and then <laughs> now it's exploded. <laughs> right? Yeah. Wow. Okay. I keep that in mind. All right. So f- let's get to the second to the final question because you've given me a lot of your time today, and no I appreciate problem, that. No problem. So, um, well, you've in a way given some of this already, but. What's one final advice that you like to leave the audience with? So it could be a mantra that you live by or a mm. quote that you got from a book that you've read or an advice that you've been giving, something that you would just like to leave the audience with. Okay. Um, basically, from one of my shirts, especially like what you're wearing right now, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> live your life to the fullest potential. I mean, I, I think, um, when I was when I was writing that down, I think it was just something like, um, 
I feel like a lot of people are like like tied up or like chained to you know just the, to the normal things of of life and like they don't want to break free because they're so used to that that kind of lifestyle and you know but once they break free from that those chains you know hey I can do this I can do that you know but I was tied down for so long that I couldn't really you know move myself to do something different in life because. Yeah. No one didn't, you know, give me the key. No one didn't teach me the, this type of way or people didn't, you know, structure me to, you know, or set me up to put me in a position where I could, you know, do this and do that. And and that's how I kind of feel with my mentor too. Like he kind of pushed me to that point where it's just like, yo, you know, I see where you're going at, you know, you got all the right, you got the right mindset, but you need some, you know, you need some guidance. And then, you know, you're going to be like a, you know, like a dime and you're going to be, you know, you was in the rough. You know, you slowly coming out, you know, you getting dust off, but you, you ain't shining, shining, you know? Mm-hmm. And it's just like, when he gave me that help, it just felt like, all right, boom, like now I'm shining. Like, oh man, I can see everything now. You know, I'm like, like it's, it's something that I didn't ever see that, you know, could happen. You know, I just felt like, oh, it's, 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 it's okay. Like, I'm okay with, you know, just being okay. I don't care, you know, about shining. Like, nah, I'm like, you need to shine. You need to be out there. You need to put yourself, you know, in a position that, you know, you want to win. Yep. You don't want to keep losing all the time. You want to win. And I was like, yeah, I was like, oh man. So you got to stop saying these words. You can't do this. Oh, I didn't do this and this, you know, it's like, you got to use different words. Those different words going to help you, you know, achieve what you really want to do in life. I said, oh man, I didn't really think about that too much. And he was telling me, I was like, yeah, you know, you're a winner. So, you know, you got to think, like a winner, you know, I'll say, Oh man, all right. Well, sounds like a plan to me. So, and I think that's like where I kind of left with that, the, uh, with that shirt and that idea and that concept, because it just felt like that felt powerful to me. And I want everybody to feel that same type of way about that. Mm. I'll say, Arigato, Desi San. Yep. Go move. It finally came to me. <laughs> That's how it happens, man. That's how it always happens. <laughs> you can thank anime for that, by the way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the number one research I heard. A lot of people learn Japanese stuff. <laughs> uh, right, right. Yeah, but I, uh, anime and uh, um, what was that book? I read that book a long time ago. It's a novel. Um, mm. Dang, I've forgotten that novel. If you read that novel, it puts... Quite tiny Japanese words in your mind. Uh, mm. man, I probably remember. <laughs> He'll come back. <laughs> He'll come back. He'll come back. Uh, that, I read it as a teenager, and then I had to go download it into my Audible. Uh, mm. Later on, I was like, "Yeah." When I got Audible, I was like, "Yeah, let me listen to it and see what it sounds like in this day and age." Mm. Oh, it's, it's the same. It, it's, yeah, it holds up. It holds up. <laughs> Oh, this is what the words sound like. It sounds different now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, do you mind leaving the audience with your, uh, anything you like to plug in? I, I know, of course, what you like to plug in, mm-hmm. but go ahead and plug yourself in. And you, All right. Um, anytime you want to contact me, uh, contact me at uh, Vet Clothing, V E T C L O T H I N G, on Instagram. Uh, you can contact me too uh, through email too as well. Vetclothing um, one at gmail dot com. Uh, Facebook as well. Uh, Facebook is Vetclothing um, line as well. So yeah, any of those sources you want to contact me or you have questions, um, please feel free to contact me anytime. I'll uh, get to you. If I don't get to you right away, uh, just give me a moment and. I'll get to you as soon as possible. All righty. Thank you again. Arigato. But yeah, thank you very much for coming on the podcast. Um, it's been something that I've wanted to do for a long time. Thank and, you, brother. Hey, we, uh, th- this is just great that we got to do this finally. And mm-hmm. after all this is done and you finally visit New York or I finally visit Tokyo, we're going to have another special episode of the game. Oh, man, that would be perfect. That would be perfect, brother. I'm, I'm long overdue for a trip to Tokyo anyway. Oh, man. Yeah, I need to go to New York, though. <laughs> I yeah, yeah. Of us, we're long overdue for trips to. <laughs> yeah, 
<laughs> I uh, think, yeah, I gotta when I go back, because uh, I think when I go back, I think I plan on trying to stay for like maybe like a couple weeks longer. Like I think maybe like three weeks about. I'm gonna try to stay. So I want to go like I still want to go kind of go Vegas though because I kind of want to gamble. Though, I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> I want to try to win some money, man. Uh, <laughs> I, need some, I need some spending money, man. And uh, <laughs> I want to try to get out there to New York because I'm like, man, because I, I guess when I was younger, I mean, I guess a little bit older, I just always had like, I felt like uh, I had a stereotype, like feeling like, oh, I'm scared, like somebody gonna rob me in New York. Yeah, well, it's from New York. So that's how I felt. So I'm like, I ain't going to New York. I'm scared, man. <laughs> someone gonna rob you. <laughs> <laughs> yep, New York has that. Uh, yeah, someone gonna rob you type of. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why only reason why they never go. And I was like, man, I say, like, why listen to this stereotype, man? You better go out there, enjoy yourself, man. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I can't thank you enough, man. <laughs> yeah. You too, my brother. Yeah, right, man. Brother. Uh, thank you all for joining us on this episode and uh, catch you all at the next episode. Stay safe out there. Don't do anything crazy. And thanks for the privilege of your company. Thanks for listening to White Label American. If you enjoyed the show, we'll appreciate if you rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast wherever you get your podcast from if you have any questions comments or have someone who will be a good guest on the show or you want to be on the show send us a message at white label american at gmail.com and make sure to follow us on facebook and instagram at white label american thank you for your support